Scientific evidence indicates that the universe began with the Big Bang more than 13 billion years ago. But less is known about how it turned into the universe we see today. Scientists believe that a tiny fraction of a second after the Big Bang, a sudden growth spurt known as cosmic inflation occurred. But how can science prove inflation really happened? Researchers at the National Institute of Standards and Technology, or NIST, have developed novel sensors that can detect the microwave radiation left over from the early universe. This microwave radiation may contain a key fingerprint of cosmic inflation. The NIST detector records the faint signals left over from the Big Bang, known as the cosmic microwave background. The technique will measure the polarization of the background microwaves, the patterns and directions in the microwave's electric fields. And inflation theory predicts that the early universe was awash in gravitational waves that would leave a very unique signature on the polarization of the cosmic microwave background. When this cosmic microwave background radiation reaches the Earth, a groundbreaking array of detectors will capture it with unprecedented detail, behaving something like the pixels in an advanced digital camera. We can measure not only the temperature of the universe from the Big Bang, but also the polarization, which is the direction the light is wiggling in. Then we can kind of do an inversion and actually map those gravity waves. The new technology is made of many microsensors combined with optical systems to collect and focus the radiation. It will search for a telltale pattern of polarization on the sky, known as B-mode polarization. The scientists are taking advantage of an unusual effect of electricity. The NIST sensors operate in the state between normal electrical conductivity and superconductivity, or the flow of electric current without resistance. Incoming microwaves heat up the detector and disrupt the current flow in this unusual state. And you go from absolutely having no resistance at all to having some ordinary resistance. And that, it turns out, makes a very, very sensitive thermometer. And we can measure almost any signal if we just turn it into a heat that applies to that superconducting material, a transition ed sensor, right on that very sharp transition between the superconducting state and the normal state that we're used to. Deploying these sensors on telescopes and other cosmological instruments could help astronomers confirm or rule out inflationary theories. This this detection is cosmology's missing link. It's something that we thought should be there, but we weren't really sure, and is, it has been eagerly sought now for close to two decades. This is not something that's just a home run, but a grand slam. It's the smoking gun for inflation. Scanning the sky from the South Pole, they say they found a ripple. A signal of this size, as Mark was saying, uh, could offer us a wealth of information about how the processes uh, proceeded during, the, during inflation how the energy density of the universe evolved during, uh, during the times that the observable scales in our universe exited that horizon. And that has the potential to teach us a lot about physics at the highest energies, physics at the, the, the extreme frontier. Inflation is a prequel uh, to the conventional Big Bang picture. Uh, it provides a story that precedes uh, the expansion of the universe, the formation of galaxies, et cetera, uh, et cetera. So the way in which inflation explains the bang uh, is in terms of a very surprising feature of physics, I think very surprising to most of us, uh, which is the fact that gravity can actually sometimes act repulsively. Uh, now, those of us who learned about gravity in high school and learned Newton's law of gravity probably think this sounds crazy, uh, because Newton's law of gravity is purely an attractive law of gravity. Uh, but that got changed with the advent of Einstein's theory of gravity, uh, which is the theory called general relativity. Uh, according to general relativity, uh, gravity normally acts attractively, but there are circumstances under which it can act repulsively. Uh, and furthermore, modern particle physics uh, very strongly indicates that at very high energies, we expect uh, there to exist the kind of states of matter uh, that would produce the repuls repulsive form of gravity uh, that general relativity allows. Uh, and inflation is basically the proposal that the bang of the Big Bang, the driving force behind the expansion, was this repulsive gravity uh, as allowed by general relativity. 
Once you decide that this mechanism of propulsion is very likely the way our universe was born, you can ask what kind of universe does it predict and does it agree with what we see. Uh, and in fact, it, 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 it under, allows us to understand three very important properties of our universe. Uh, one is it allows us to understand the uniformity of our universe. Uh, as I think was already mentioned, this cosmic background radiation that has been now measured with incredible precision uh, has fluctuations, which are incredibly interesting. Uh, but these fluctuations are incredibly tiny. They're only at the level of one part in 100,000. Uh, to an accuracy of one part in 100,000, the cosmic background radiation that we see is the same intensity in every direction that we look. The universe is just unbelievably uniform on large scales. And that cannot be understood in the conventional Big Bang picture. Uh, but inflation explains it very naturally. You start with a very small universe, which becomes uniform before inflation, and then inflation just takes over and magnifies this tiny uniform speck to become large enough to include everything that we observe. A uh, brief description of what I see as the most exciting subject for uh, the next 40 years in physics, and that is to study the initial one second of the universe's life and in fact watch the universe be born. And the way that we expect to do this is with gravitational waves. If we look out in the sky, we see cosmic microwaves, electromagnetic waves, coming to us from the Big Bang. These waves are produced when the universe was very young and bring us a picture of the universe at uh, the time, in fact, when the universe was roughly 100,000 years. Well, really 380,000 years, but to astronomical accuracy, roughly 100,000 years. Uh, and these photons, electromagnetic waves, cannot bring us a picture of the universe any earlier than that because the universe was so hot and so dense that photons could not travel in the very early universe. And they would be travel, they would be created, they would be absorbed, they uh, would lose all their information. The new ones would be created, would be absorbed, lose all their information. Neutrinos can bring us a picture. These are fundamental particles also that are very penetrating. They could bring us a picture of the universe at age one second. But earlier than that, they are absorbed and could not have uh, brought us a picture of earlier. Gravitational waves are the only form of radiation that penetrates so strongly through matter that it could travel from the birth of the universe to us today and bring us a picture of the birth or of whatever went on in the first one second of the life of the universe. And there, we think, was a lot of violence in the first second of the universe, and this is what I would like to study with gravitational waves in the coming uh, several decades. Uh, first is the Big Bang singularity itself, and the inflationary expansion of the universe uh, immediately after the Big Bang. Second are these cosmic strings that I mentioned that we think may have been produced by enlarging fundamental strings from string theory uh, uh, during the inflationary expansion of the universe. This is a simulation by Ken Olam at Tufts University of a cosmic string that has a kink on it, a bend in it, and it throws off gravitational waves as this bend moves. How would you get a bend? Well, strings would run into each other, collide, and when they collide with high probability, they reconnect. And so you wind up with a bend in this string and a bend in that string when they reconnect. And gravitational waves are the ideal tool for searching for these things and thereby testing string theory. When the universe was 10 to the minus 12 seconds old, one trillionth of a second old, theory says that at that point, the electromagnetic force was born, and the weak nuclear force was born. Earlier than that, these forces were unified, and the unified force came apart, and the laws of physics as we know them came into being at that uh, very early time. And this may have happened in bubbles like water droplets condensing in the sky. And if so, then this is called a first order phase transition. If so, then the region where the forces have separated, the new laws of physics are occurring, is inside these bubbles, and these bubbles will expand at nearly the speed of light, collide, 
and produce gravitational waves in the collision. And those gravitational waves are predicted today to have the right wavelength to be seen by LISA. And finally, our universe might have been born as a membrane, a brain, in higher dimensions that was all crinkled up like this uh, sheet of paper. And when the universe discovers that there is a bend in this uh, membrane between here and there, there's a large tension in the membrane like in a, a piece of rubber and it quickly straightens out and vibrates with very large amplitude vibration. And those vibrations are seen by us living in the brain as gravitational waves. And so this is an example of the kind of surprise that gravitational waves could bring to us. It's very speculative, but it is a possibility.